Hi, this is Paul from Pear Tree Education, and today I'm going to be speaking about integrated subjects, which is part one of a continuing series on 21st century education. Integrated subjects is an area of 21st century education that I'm particularly passionate about. It's also an area that's not very well understood publicly. There are various reasons for this. Firstly, there are different terms for integrated subjects, such as subject integration, interdisciplinary studies, and even theme-based learning or project-based learning. Also, there are various levels of integration and this creates more complexity. Author Robert Fogarty presents 10 different levels of integration in his book, How to Integrate the Curricula. And we have to bear in mind that the average individual has this ingrained mentality that subjects should be taught separately. However, I disagree with this and I hope you do too as you're watching this video. So what do I mean by integrated subjects? Well, firstly, this definitely includes theme-based learning. There's this level of knowledge that is required, but we don't think about this knowledge in terms of a specific subject area. Is this knowledge that's required to understand a theme or a topic? Then at some point there's a project that takes place and this is an exploratory project, one which requires skills and let us not forget higher level thinking skills, all of those advocated by Bloom's taxonomy. Let's look at an example of a theme. A simple one would be sustainability, but actually when you start trying to apply this in education, you realize that sustainability is a very, very broad theme. It encompasses everything. So we have to look at a narrower theme within that, uh, what we could class as like a sub theme. So we could go for something like resource sustainability. When you look at the sustainability of natural resources, you immediately start thinking about specific subjects. We've got geography, geology, chemistry, biology, math, and of course, language arts. Whatever your theme is, and whatever your sub-theme is, it needs to be broad enough to utilize as many different subject areas as possible. Does that mean that we exclude certain themes? I have to say yes. Think about this way. If the thing that you want children to study is only useful within that one subject area, then what is the purpose of studying that? One example would be calculus. The average individual is highly unlikely to ever use calculus in real life unless they're moving into occupations such as economy, astrophysics, or engineering. Unless the students are able to study the higher level application of calculus in some form or another to make it relevant. So for example, if you were studying a theme related to space travel, then you could incorporate calculus within that, but could also incorporate other subject areas as well, including history and politics, as well as things like physics, language arts again. Then as part of this theme, you need that application and the application comes from creating projects. So as we mentioned before, this project is an exploratory project where the students actually get to apply the knowledge and apply skills. But think about it this way. It's like a university paper. With projects-based learning, you actually do more than that. You create things, you make things, and you definitely look at many different subject areas as part of your project. Another theme would be globalization. Again, this is a very, very broad theme. So let's look at a narrow example, like food globalization. Immediately, I start thinking about geography and math, which would include economics, biology, chemistry, so the kind of earth sciences, sociology, history, politics, math again, but more connected with things like physics, so applied math, language arts. So what about something like art? Where does art come into this? For me, unless you're studying the history of art, I don't really see how art should be studied as a separate subject. Art is an expression of an idea, what you want to communicate. And so if you're studying art in isolation, you're detaching it from what you're trying to express. You can study the skills of art, but it's not just about trying to imitate someone else's art form. It's about finding your own way of expressing your ideas about that specific theme. Students should be taught and encouraged to use as many different art forms as possible. This includes performing arts, which again are expressions of ideas, expressions of feelings, emotions, and ways of communicating ideas to an audience. And I feel the same way about technology. Technology is not a separate subject area. Technology is a tool that's to be used to express or to be able to research within the theme and to be integrated with all those other different subject areas. It's not something to be studied in isolation because then you detach technology from what it's used for. And what about knowledge? Well, knowledge is definitely necessary, 
but at the moment it seems to start from birth and then just continue forever with no transition whatsoever into the high level thinking skills that we've been talking about because it seems like the moment young people learn one thing we seem to find something else equally important for them to learn next there's never time given towards actually applying the knowledge that they learned before so therefore there has to be a balance between knowledge and application and there has to be a transition in this as well so we're not flicking a switch we're not saying to educators okay today's your first day at high school so now it's time to start using higher level thinking skills no it's not like that at all we have to be able to say that when you first start learning that there is an element of application but because of your age and because of your knowledge that you're not able to apply that knowledge very well so therefore you need to put greater emphasis on learning facts at the younger age and then gradually make a transition where you learn less facts but you do more application you never eliminate fact learning because it's something that we can do forever. But as this graph shows, you see that transition where at some point where the application takes over the fact-based learning as the priority of education. Now there's no specific age for this to take place. It's based on the developmental ability of the child. Some children may not be capable or very good at applying knowledge, but that doesn't mean to say that you eliminate this because of their age. They should still be learning to apply knowledge. Anyway, that wraps up today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give us a rating. And if you'd like to watch more videos like this, please subscribe if you haven't already done so. The next video I'll be bringing out will be about technology. This is Paul from Petro Education. Thanks for watching.